So today we're going to answer the question, can fasting actually reverse a poor memory that comes from aging? And there seems to be this agreement that it's normal to lose your memory when you age, okay? Maybe you've been told that by your doctor. My viewpoint is I totally disagree. Now, there is a point of limitation of matter where you can't reverse it. You can definitely improve things, and if it's not too far gone, hopefully reverse them. And the key to getting your memory and your focus and your concentration back is really just to understand the basic problem and the different factors that relate to it. Okay, so what do we know about this topic? Well, we know that Alzheimer's takes like 15 years to develop. It doesn't happen overnight. It starts off with a little memory problem and it gets worse and worse and worse, okay? And we do know that people as they age, they do have memory problems. Some people don't. Some people are really sharp into the 90s. And we know other people that are in their 40s that have a terrible memory, sometimes even in their 30s. So what else do we know? We know that the areas involved with Alzheimer's, the parts of the brain, are the same areas in the brain that actually make insulin. That's an interesting connection. So we have the hippocampus, okay? That part of the brain is involved with memory and learning. Then you have the prefrontal cortex, which is involved in short-term memory, planning, decision-making, goals, differentiating good from bad, uh, trivial versus important, the ability to predict consequences. Talked about short-term memory and selective attention. Now, the ability to focus on something and filter everything out so you don't get distracted. How many people have a problem with that? Now, I will say that there's a relationship between this part of the brain and these right here, but honestly, there's a lot of unknowns about this. They don't really have it figured out. But there is some connection between this part of the brain and these things right here. And then you have the olfactory bulb, okay? And that's involved in the sensation of smell. And then those neural circuits can go to different parts of the brain because let's say, for example, if you smell um, smoke, for example, that alarms um, part, a part of the brain to take action and do something about it. Or um, let's say you, you smell some rotten food. That's going to tell you not to eat it. So we need our, our smell. Another interesting side note about this is that these parts of the brain also have uh, a good amount of uh, zinc involved. But I'm going to do a separate video on that. Let's focus on insulin right here. So these are the areas in the brain that get damaged with Alzheimer's, but they're also the areas that can actually make insulin. Now, if someone has Alzheimer's, uh, there's something called intranasal insulin that they can spray up into their nose, which does not get into their lungs. It actually gets connected to nerve fibers that connect to the olfactory bulb and bypass the blood-brain barrier and go right into the brain and this has shown huge improvements in memory. So apparently we need insulin to work for your memory to work. And when people have Alzheimer's, it's not just uh, memory loss, it's that you lose your GPS, your ability to locate yourself in space. It's kind of like a, um, okay, where did I park? That type of thing. And we know that the hippocampus is involved in that as well. All right, the next point I want to talk about is the blood-brain barrier, okay? Um, the blood-brain barrier can develop insulin resistance. If there's too much insulin, um, your body will protect it by developing insulin resistance around the blood-brain barrier. So this is one of the big problems in letting fuel into the cell. And actually, at the heart of Alzheimer's, you have this synapse, which actually is dying because it doesn't have fuel because obviously there's a problem with insulin, okay? Whether this is shut down or you have insulin resistance or a combination of both. Also in diabetics or pre-diabetics, you have lower amounts of insulin through the cerebral spinal fluid that actually is another route up. So we do know that there's a problem with insulin, we have a problem with insulin resistance, and we have a problem with the fuel in the cell. So the end result of this environment is you start developing amyloid placking, okay? Now there's some other placking going on too, but this is one of the big factors that's involved in Alzheimer's right here, amyloid placking, which basically is a type of protein that is misfolded or stuck together in a way that makes that protein unusable and that has a hard time leaving the body. So it's kind of stuck there between the synapses. So we lose the communication connection between synapses. So research right now is heavily 
focused on trying to get rid of this right here. Now, of course, we want to prevent that. So we're going to have to keep insulin lowered by keeping our sugar down. But there's some other things that we can do. Fasting. Why? Fasting is one of the most powerful things you can do because starting at 16 hours of fasting, your body starts turning on something called autophagy, okay? This word means self-eating, okay? Where the body starts eating up damaged proteins and misfolded proteins. These are the proteins that turn into amyloid placking that are accumulating and can't leave the body. So it just so happens that autophagy is the answer to that because autophagy will take this into its cell and spit out brand new amino acids. It'll help recycle the damaged proteins. Not to mention, it'll also clear out viruses, bacteria, things like that. But it starts at 16 hours, but it gets stronger at 18 hours and up to 23 hours. So if you're at 23 hours, you're doing what's called one meal a day. Very important uh, for Alzheimer's patients. Now, some people are going to say, well, what about if the, my grandmother is frail and if she goes on intermittent fasting, she's going to lose more weight? Very simply, what you do is you add more fat in the form of MCT oil. That gives you the calories. But see, MCT oil will actually turn into ketones, okay? And ketones will stimulate autophagy. And the cool thing about ketones is that ketones will provide a bypass of the glucose fuel and feed the neurons directly. So these neurons do not need to run on glucose. In fact, what's really cool about this is that if someone does have Alzheimer's uh, and you give them exogenous ketones, ketone salts and MCT oil, and even in the presence of glucose, the brain will use the ketones. So the, the brain loves ketones. It'll use ketones as its priority. So the combination of fasting and getting on the ketogenic diet with adding MCT oil and, and exogenous ketones for someone that has Alzheimer's is a very powerful plan. Now, I'm going to put some links down below on a lot of research being done on this right now, which is fascinating. Um, but the point is that if you know someone that has Alzheimer's, have them do this. If you're starting to have short-term memory loss, I highly suggest you do this. You may not need to do these right here, but definitely this and definitely this. Thanks for watching. So if you want to get notified with all my content, click the notification bell next to subscribed.